Good morning students. Today I am here with the third poem of your English book First Flight. The name of the poem is A Tiger in the Jew. It is written by Leslie Norris. George Leslie Norris was a prize winning Welsh poet and short story writer. He is considered as most important Welsh writers of the post war period and his literary works have won many prizes. His famous works are Finding Gold, The Loud Winder, Phoenix Living Poets Series, Ransom, etc. Dear students, before proceeding with the poem, I am going to give a small introduction of the poem. This poem, this poem is written by Leslie Norris. He explains the agony and helplessness of a caged tiger that lives in a zoo. The poet explains what his life could be if he had been a free animal. The poet has tried to explain about the condition of animals that are caged by human beings for their own fun. The main objective of the poet is to make you understand the importance of freedom, the danger of deforestation and blessings of forestation. The poet wants to make you understand that all animals remain happy only in their natural habitat and it is your responsibility to preserve the environment that is their natural habitat so that these animals may live happily. When we talk about the poem, this poem contrasts a tiger when it is in its natural habitat and when it is imprisoned in a zoo. This poem moves from zoo to forest and back again to zoo. So let us start the poem. These are the words meaning. You can see them. This is the first stanza of your poem. He starts in his vivid stripes the few steps of his gaze on pads of velvet quite in his quiet rays. He here is used for the tiger that has been cased, Starks moves with bright, vivid, bright colored stripes, lines on the tiger's body, pads pass of the tiger and reach anger, violent and uncontrollable anger, uncontrollable anger. In this stanza, the poet says that the tiger that is confined in the zoo moves around in the case. He has strong bright colored stripes on the body. The poet further says that the tiger can take only a few steps because the case is small. One can note here the footsteps because he has very soft feet. In the third line you can see that poet has compared the paws of the tiger with the velvet. A soft cloth. The poet has compared his pass with the velvet because, because of which there is no sound. That is why the poet has used the word quiet. He is moving quietly. Nobody is able to hear the sound of his footsteps. In the last line you can see in his quiet rays, quiet still and rays anger. To, the tiger wants to show his anger, he is very angry, he wants to show his ferociousness but still he is quiet, he is moving, he is working only in the limited area of the case. He can't show his anger because he is helpless, he cannot do anything. So in the very first danger, the poet has shown us the tiger that has been cased and he is in the Jew. Now I am telling you the rhyme scheme of the stanza. At last you can see stripes and quite uh, doesn't rhyme with each other and case and rays are rhyming with each other. Stripes and quite are not rhyming with each other. So stripes A, case B, quite C and rays again B. A, B, C, B is the rhyme scheme and uh, this rhyme scheme you will find throughout the poem uh, in all the stanzas 
this rhyme scheme can be seen now i'm telling you the literary devices which are used in this stanza the poet has used he for the tiger so he has been personified so first literary device used here is personification in the very first line you can see that there is assonance assonance what is assonance assonance take place when two or more than two words repeat the same vowel sound with different consonant in the very first line you can see in i vowel his i vowel vivid i vowel stripes i vowel so there is assonance the next literary device device here is imagery imagery takes place when we use the words in such a way that it creates the real picture in our mind when the poet uh, says that his he talks in his vivid stripes the few steps of his gaze then it creates a real picture of the tiger in front of us in our mind so it is imagery devices used here the next literary device used here is consonance what is consonance it is a literary device which is identified by repetition of consonants in the neighboring words and you can see in the very first line starks s consonant his s consonant stripes s consonant so consonants literary device is also used in this stanza the next literary device in line number 3 you can see that poet has compared the paws of the tiger with the velvet so here the metaphor literary device is used after that the next literary device which is used here is that is enjambment what is enjambment the continuation of a sentence without a pause or punctuation mark you can see in the first line at the last there is no any pause or punctuation mark so there is enjambment literary device after that the next literary device which is and there in this stanza that is oxymoron oxymoron what is oxymoron when two words seems to be the opposite of each other in the last line you can see that the poet has used quite and raise these are two adjectives and they are uh, different in meaning quite still and rage uh, rage anger so this is this this type of combination is called oxymoron so this literary device is also used here so there are literary devices you can see and read them again rhyme scheme a b c b personification tiger is personified metaphor the paws are compared with the velvet and enjambment when there is no punctuation mark at the end and the line is continue imagery when the words create the real image after that consonants s sound is repeated and consonant sound is repeated assonance when vowel sound is repeated and oxymoron when two uh, adjectives opposite in meaning are used together so these are the literary devices this is the next stanza of your poem he should be lurking in shadow sliding through long grass near the water hole where plump deer pass lurking means laying hidden in order to attack sliding move along the surface or you can see to move quietly without any notice jise aap pisalna ya sirakna bhi keh sakte ho in hindi and uh, plump fat deer deer is a favorite food of a tiger in this stanza the poet says that the tiger was free if the tiger was free he would hide himself behind the long grass near the water hole so that he could easily catch a deer which is his favorite food in order to have it as a food here you can see in this stanza the poet has taken uh, taken us in the forest before this stanza in the first stanza we were in the zoo and uh, we were discussing about the tiger which has been uh, caged and now we are in the forest now in the forest what the tiger does the poet is discussing 
actually the poet wants to say that the actual life of tiger is to live in jungle live in the forest where he could hunt and eat but in the case he cannot do all these activities he is helpless when we talk about the rhyme scheme again the same rhyme scheme is here a b c b now i am talking about the literary devices which are used here the first one you can see that in the very beginning of the stanza you can see that personification is there because the poet has used he for the tiger after that you can see imagery is also there when the poet say about lurking in the shadows gliding through the long grass so it creates the real picture of tiger in front of us it creates the real scene in front of us so the poet is saying that here you can see that enjambment is also there because in line 2 and 3 there is no any punctuation mark or pause after that the next literary device which is used here is in the last line you can see plump pause p sound is repeated and at the beginning of these words so it is alliteration so these are the literary devices which are used here you can read them again this is the third stanza of your poem he should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge baring his white fangs his claws terrorizing the villages again we are in the forest the poet is discussing about the forest scene he here is used for the tiger and snarling snarling means sound a sound which is made to frighten the people a warning sound or you can say an angry sound and bearing exposing why fangs teeth sharp teeth terrorizing to cause fear in this stanza the poet says that the tiger would have been free he would have snarled around the house located at the outskirt of the forest he would show his real anger he would fright the people he if he would he, if he would be free he would have uh, terrorized people with his sharp teeth and claws he would create the fear among the people that is the real strength of the tiger living in the villages so here again the rhyme scheme is a b c b literary devices again imagery when you talk about the snarling around the house jungle sage terrorizing the people then it creates the real picture in front of us after that in the very first line you can say should o vowel around o vowel house o vowel again there is assonance after that in the third line you can see his fangs class s consonant so this is consonants after that imagery is also there and the one more literary device which is used here when is onomatopoeia when there is onomatopoeia when words are used in such a way that resembles the sound here the snarling word is used it is related to sound so here the onomatopoeia literary devices used after that enjambment is also there because at the last in the first line at the last there is no punctuation mark so enjambment is also there now come to the next stanza but he is locked in a concrete cell his strength behind bars stalking the length of his case ignoring visitors here concrete cell means very strong cell which is made of very strong building material which is the mixture of cement sand water gravel bricks etc very strong the poet says that the tiger is confined is locked in a very strong cell in a very strong case it is made of strong building material he further says that his strength behind bar 
he is sloked in the case but his strength his ferociousness is also sloked behind the bars because he can't show his real anger his real ferociousness he is helpless what can he do he can stalk only in the case he can uh, he can't do anything else ignoring the visitor it means that he can't make them uh, fear his ferociousness is also locked in that case he just stalks just walk in the case he never tries to uh, terrorize the people the visitors because his his power is restricted by the case he can't do anything so he is ignoring the visitors again the poet has taken us to the zoo where the tiger is in prison tiger is has been caged so again there is same rhyming scheme a b c b again there is imagery because when the poet uh, talk about the stalking the length of the keys ignoring the visitors it also creates the scene in our mind real picture in our mind after that in the very first line you can see locked e concrete e cell e e vowel sound is repeated again and again so there is assonance after that in the second line you can see behind bar b b sound b consonant sound is repeated so here it is alliteration and um, in the very first and second line the poet has used he and his so it is personification the next literary device which is used here is consonants in the second line you can see his s strength is behind bars s s consonant sound is repeated again and again so it is consonants these are the literary devices you can read them again this is the last stanza of your poem he hears the last voice at night the patrolling cars and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars here the he is used for tiger so the poet says in this stanza that the tiger is tiger hears the sound of patrolling car what are patrolling cars the cars of the police which are used to guard at night and day time also so at the night the tiger hears their sound and he stares stares means looks continuously the stars with shining stars with his shining eyes the poet wants to say that the tiger is sad because he is confined in the cage so he cannot do anything therefore he just hears and listens and sees uh, only this he can do he stares the stars at night and he is trying to divert his attention perhaps he is saying to the heaven that why he has been present in this cage so again we are in the zoo the poet is showing us the condition of the tiger at night time rhyme scheme again same rhyme scheme cars and stars are rhyming but night and eyes are not so a b c b is the rhyme scheme and when we talk about the literary devices again in the first line you can see he is used for the tiger so there is personification and in the first line you can see he hears h sound is repeated so it is alliteration h sound is repeated at the beginning of these words these are consonants so it is alliteration and the imagery is also there when we talk about the patrolling cars and when we see that the tiger is uh, uh, staring towards the stars then it creates a real picture in front of us the next literary device which is used here is assonance in third line you can see with i his i brilliant i so i sound is repeated i vowel is repeated so it is assonance after that you can see that there is one more literary device that is enjambment in third line you can see that there is no pause or punctuation mark so enjambment is there so this is the last stanza now students the poet shows in this poem that an animal is always majestic when seen in its natural habitat rather than 
in an artificial setting such as zoo. In, in doing so, the poet's message is that we should all strive to conserve the natural habitat of animals. We should stop the activities of hunters and poachers in order to make forest available for these animals. Why they are caged? Because no forest is left. The forests have been cleared for industrialization, agriculture or any other purpose. As a result, many animals like tiger have lost their natural habitat and they are forced to live in the zoo. So, this is all about this poem. Thank you.